What's up me bomb peeps? I'm here to talk about an Air Jordan lifestyle shoe. It's new, but not totally new. It gives off serious MA2 Max 200 vibes. does draw on the inspiration of three iconic retro models, the 3, the 6, and the 11. It's named after the street or the road where Michael Jordan's estate is in Illinois. It is the Air Jordan Point Lane. Let's get into it. I won't give you the whole spiel, but if you get anything out of the video, please make use of the buttons down below, the like, the comment, subscribe, and the bell. And if you've got Instagram, head on over there and check out my page, Three Kicks a Day. Give us a follow. I appreciate your support. I can't help but love the Jordan brand. It's true, I do get frustrated with availability of some models and the way that they push those models out as well as pricing that sometimes makes getting sneakers a bit of a pipe dream but if we sort of put aside some of those availability issues there are just as many performance and lifestyle shoes that are readily available by the brand and let's be honest they are absolute fire like the point lane. It'll come as no surprise to the viewers on the channel, but if you're new here, check out my review on the MA2. In that video, I spoke about how that silhouette was basically my favorite ever Air Jordan lifestyle non-performance silhouette. And the point lane gives me MA2 vibes. It is definitely got the silhouette of the MA2, but is beefed up by those three killer retro models, the three, the six, and the 11. The molded heel counter on the point lane gives us a total Jordan 3 vibe. And what's really interesting is that the branding is the Nike Air branding and not the Jumpman that we've seen in a lot of other especially more recent Air Jordan releases. There's been a distancing from the Nike Air brand for some time. And so I find it really interesting that they've chosen to put the Nike Air on the point lane in a similar way that they would put it on an OG colorway of a Jordan 3. There is leather overlays on the shoe, which the brand says is from the Jordan 11. I think that's probably the most liberal, I guess, interpretation on the shoe from one of those historic models. But I kind of get where they're coming from with it, especially given the way that the Air Jordan 11 was positioned as such a fashion forward premium type of sneaker. As far as the six goes, we've got the details coming through from the tongue and also the midsole. But for me, I get total six vibes from the toe box area. When I look down, I see the six. Colorways have been really good on launch as well. At least here in Australia, there were two colorways that were made available. There was a white point lane model with some blue accents that did look really fresh. And then there was this guy, the infrared model. For me, it was a no brainer. The black and infrared combo is just so nice. I honestly couldn't pass it up on this silhouette. I have also noticed that there have been another couple of colorways that have been made available and they really have hit the mark I think on every colorway so far. There's nothing that I think doesn't look good. So don't be too fast if you miss out on any of the colorways that are being released now. I'm sure that there will be some nice colorways being released in the future. On this colorway, as far as the outsole goes, we have got a translucent and black mix. It is all rubber and an infrared Jumpman logo in the forefoot of the shoe. The midsole, it is predominantly black with some infrared accents in the forefoot part of the midsole, as well as the midsole wedge. That's what looks really great about the sneaker because it is a basically all black silhouette you're getting that infrared in all the right places that it just 
pops in the way it should. Also in the midsole we've got some of those translucent parts from the outsole wrapping up into the midsole. The upper is basically all black. It's all black with the exception of the Nike Air branding on the heel, which is done in white, black laces, and as far as material goes, we've got a mix of a couple of different materials. It's basically leather and suede, and then we've got some textile that makes its way into the midfoot and around the heel area. The tongue itself almost feels like a neoprene type of material. On foot, the shoe feels really comfortable. There's a nice amount of padding around the heel, not too much around the tongue, but nothing that would give me any problems or certainly not any issues with all day wear. As far as sizing goes, I did get the point lane in a 12 and a half, which is a half size down from my true to size 13. I did that because it was available and also because I found the MA2 and Max 200s to be a uh, a roomy or a forgiving fit, not necessarily a big fit, but because they share a very similar silhouette, I thought I would try it out. And while it's comfortable, it is snug. So it fits well, but it is a little bit on the tighter side. So I guess what I'm trying to say is I would go true to size if you are buying the point lane it's priced at 200 australian dollars locally here in australia and i think that that's pretty reasonable given what other sneakers are priced at at least here in australia but i guess it is a little bit pricey and this probably leads me to one of the biggest questions that one would ask themselves if they are considering the point lane I've made reference to the MA2 a fair bit in this video, and it is likely that if you are considering the point lane, you may end up trying to decide between the point lane and the MA2. I think it is totally reasonable to not purchase one if you've got the other. And I think the decision isn't necessarily really clear cut. The point lane is a little bit more chunky and has those absolute references to those classic retro model. Whereas the MA2 feels like a little bit more of a trimmed down version of the same silhouette. That doesn't really help you in deciding which sneaker to go for. So I think the simplest way to put it is go based on colorway. Honestly, I think if you go with the intention of buying either the MA2 or the Point Lane and make a decision based on colorway, you're not going to go wrong. They really fill that very similar gap that you would be looking to fill in your sneaker collection. They're a casual sneaker, they're not performance based, and they're a low top that is kind of chunky. So yeah, just pick based on colorway. Anyway, I'm really interested in your thoughts, what you think about the point lane and how it fits as part of the Air Jordan lifestyle range. Do you think there are too many sneakers that look the same now in their range? Or do you think there's room for the point lane? I really really like it i think that there's enough difference between this and other sneakers that it kind of warrants to be part of the range but leave your comments down below and until the next video laters